Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video I will attempt to answer who is AdWords just stalled. Well, in reality, I will be disproving what has seemingly become a popular theory, the idea that Nikolai is AdWords just stalled. And in the process, I'm going to burn up some alternatives, but most importantly, I don't think there is a definitive answer to this question. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> So in order to disprove this theory, I must first explain the theory from the perspective of those who believe it. Then I will use the lore to disprove why it's not possible, and while I'm at it, disprove some other similar theories. So to start, why do people think that Adler is Nikolai? Well to start, let's uh, explain who both of these people are. Adler is the administrative replica in charge of Serpensk, while Nikolai is a random gestalt found in the medical database. They are the only two men in the entire game with images depicting them, and from there we can get into the theorizing. So first part of the theory, why introduce a random man with no plot relevance in the medical database? This man have, must have some level of plot significance to be included in such a database, and there must be a reason the devs included it. Second, Adler and Nikolai when put directly next to each other look rather similar, showing some kind of relation as can be seen with Alster and her gestalt. Third, Nikolai is a writer, and Adler shows interest not only in pens, but also in writing in his diary. Fourth, Adler's gestalt met Arion, and Nikolai living in the same cell block as Arion seems to connect the two. These evidence do seem to connect the two characters, and it should be added that part of this theory also establishes Rosita Fuawa as the gestalt of Calibri, due to the commonality of the bioresonant markers. So with this level of connection, one could connect the two characters. However, personally, this does not make a lot of sense to me. Um, first, I'd like to disprove the evidence for this theory and then provide additional evidence that further argues the contrary. First, the medical database is filled with characters with limited plot importance or with characters who were cut from the original game. For example, Anne Gabriel or Gael Waltrud, two people with no known connections anywhere else in the plot, and also the one doctor who we see in some promotional art who is also in this document. One could argue we just haven't found their importance yet. So, on to the next point. Adler and Nikolai looking alike is perhaps the strongest evidence. However, it does have a hole in it, that being almost all of replicas look similar to each other, bar some minor changes. But this isn't a huge issue, because the next one is the writer issue. Adler does show interest in a pen. However, in the replica overview and issues page, there is nothing mentioned of having any care for pens or writing in general. Rather, it just states that he will need new fetish objects constantly. This doesn't disprove him of being a writer in the past life, however, it does state that you can't really use it as evidence that he was one, because I think it would be in, you know, the nation's document on him. I think it should also be added here that all replicas are supposed to write in their diaries. Yes, we don't recover many other complete diaries, but that's also because Adler is very high-ranking, so thus his diary would be more well-preserved, as opposed to a Yule whose diary is not high-ranking, so as of such wouldn't have as much importance. The next piece of evidence, though, complicates this idea very much. Examining the diary entry where he talks about his past gestalt life, and this is a piece of evidence that people use as proof that Nikolai and Adler are the same person, uh, he actually says the following, I had a dream last night, another memory of my gestalt life I believe, I was wearing my uniform, there was a young woman, her hair white as snow, and I was conducting some sort of test. I had a deck of cards with astronomical symbols on them, and asked her to guess the planet of the card I was holding. First up, why is a writer, which is what Nikolai is, in a uniform? Second, why is a writer doing a test to Ariane? If we think about this deeper, maybe this is Adler's Gestalt doing a bioresonance test on Arion. The implications of that are hilarious to me. The fact that Adler may be the reason why they failed to tell she was bioresonant is hilarious. But if that's true, there's zero chance that this random writer Nikolai is the guy doing the test. We have to remember Nikolai is also younger than Arion. Like, by a lot, he's younger than the Esos, who are also younger than Arion. So why is this young dude you know, doing a bioresonance test on a woman decent bit older than him, but he's describing her as a young woman, it, it just doesn't really make sense. There is a slight issue I have on top of this, and that goes down to the largest piece of evidence that Nikolai is not the gestalt of Adler. And that evidence comes from the very document he is introduced in, and the presence of Calibris in Rotfront. If one remembers why they are accessing the medical database, it is to unlock a door mentioned by Issa's mother. 
a door referencing an email that was received by a Kawibri, and at the same time, in that same email, is an email referencing Ariane. This establishes the following. While Arion was in the hospital, Kawibri's existed, and the medical database existed as well. Meaning, even if you think Rotfront is purely dreams. These three facts are connected to each other, and as of such, to accept one as true, all three must be accepted as true. From here, we can look at the generational number of the Calibris, which is the sixth generation. So how could a fifth generation Adler's Gestalt be alive and active after the following sixth generation had already begun? Now, one could retort and say the database is old and it's outdated and Nikolai is quite old until you check his birth date, as I aforementioned, and you find that he is younger than the Edos. So how is a man who is younger than the Edos serving and alive at a time when the Adler unit is presumably already, you know, active? This whole theory is based on a man who is younger than the Edos somehow interrogating Arion and then growing up to be a gestalt of a unit that was already in production. To throw even more confusion, we can add into the, another theory that perhaps generations are just ranks in the army. If true, it would make the ISA evidence, the possibility of Calibris, you know, that would be thrown out the window, but it would not explain why someone younger than ISA is interrogating Arianne. That is something that is clearly set up in his memories. To me, it makes no sense. We need to invalidate so much evidence to make it possible for Nikolai to be the Gestalt. So, on one hand, I don't think there's any possibility it is Nikolai. On another hand, it could have been the interrogator, but I think there is evidence against that. So, that leaves us with the last possibility. We just don't know who it is. We know who it isn't. We know it isn't Nikolai. And I think a lot of the complexity here is compounded by the fact that, honestly, Adler's diary is not a reliable source of information. I usually do not use it in theories because I view it as an unreliable narrator situation. But combining all these details, I think it's the only safe thing we can say is that no, it isn't Nikolai, and maybe it's an interrogator or just someone we haven't met. I'm curious what you all think, but for me, I'm certain it isn't Nikolai. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe or join either my main Discord link below, the unofficial Signalis Discord, or the r Signalis Discord, all of which are linked below. All three are awesome places, and you'll be able to find people to talk about Signalis too. But for today, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.